Hello, my name is Kishwani. S K E S H W A N I Kishwani. <clears throat> I have been solving math problems for GMAT out of this book here, the GMAT review, the official guide. This is the 12th edition. The problem that I'm about to solve is the one that you will find on page number 184, problem solving number 219. Let's take a look at it. Uh, number 219. And if you have the old book, if you have the older version, if you have the 11th edition, which is this edition right here, you will find the exact same problem, again on the same page number, page 184 is this one, problem solving number 236. So if you have 11th edition, this is the tag that you want to use. The difference between this and the 12th edition is that I inserted additional information of 12E for the 12th edition. Let's, let's take a look at it. It says, if A, B, and C are three consecutive positive integers, three consecutive positive integers, so they have to be consecutive one after the other, like 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 13, 14, 6, 14, 13, 14, 15, and so on and so forth, they have to be positive, and they have to be integers, they have to be whole numbers. So I'm just going to make up three whole numbers. And we are told that A is less than B, which is less than C. So let's make up something. Just let's say two, two, three, four. Just to be on the safe side, I'm going to start also start with the odd numbers, three, four, five. Let's see what the problem is saying. Question simply is which of the following must be true? Must is the most important word there. Uh, whatever it is that we're going to claim, it has to be true all the time. It does not say which of the following may be true or which of the following could be true. We have to, whatever we claim has to be true all the time. First statement says. The difference between, so this is my A, B, and C. The first statement says, the difference between C and A equals 2. Does it? Well, let's take a look. If we do 2, 3, 4, C minus A is 2 actually. 4 minus 2 is 2. And if you start 3, 4, 5, 5 minus 3 is 2. So that works. Statement number 1 is correct. Of course, the, dif of course the difference between C and A has to be 2 because there are three consecutive numbers. So you start with any number, any number that you want to start with, the next number is going to be one more than the first number, and the following number is going to be one more than the middle number, which is same as saying that it is two more than the first number. So of course the difference between the last number and the first number has to be true. Statement one is true. Let's look at the answer choices, let's see what we can knock out. This is how I do it. Don't do all three statements together. Just do one statement at a time, start with the statement that you find the easiest one. Doesn't have to be the first statement, start with the one that you find the easiest. Figure out whether it's right or wrong and knock out the impossible answers next. Let's look at the answer choices. Anything, does, anything that does not have Roman numeral 1 in it, I'm going to cross it out because 1 works. B says 2 only, so that's 1. C says 1 and 2 only, it has 1 in it. So D says, D says 2 and 3, so that does, that's not going to work. Let's look at second statement. A times B times C is even. Well, let's take a look at it. So if you start with even numbers, what we're asking basically is even times odd times even, or if you start with odd, odd times even times odd, are these quantity even number? That's what we have to figure out. This seems a bit messy. I'm gonna move on to third statement. Let's, let's take a look, let's leave it alone for a second. A plus B plus C over 3 is an integer. Let's take a look at it. That's what I do. I, even, though, even though statement number 2 is not unbelievably complicated, but why, should, why the hell should I spend my time on it? I do the easier one first. Third statement seems easier to me. Easier in the sense that, not easier in the sense that it involves less complicated math. The math is not complicated in any of these three statements. It's easier in the sense that it's going to take me less time. So let's take a look at it. You see, as you can see there, they're telling me that a plus b plus c divided by 3 has to be an integer. Of course it's going to be an integer because this quantity here, this quantity that you see here, the sum of a and b and c divided by 3 is simply the average of the three numbers. And the average of the three numbers, since they are three consecutive numbers, is going to be the middle number, b. 
So the question is, is B an integer? Of course it's an integer because they are all bloody integers because that's what we started out with. A, B and C, they, they, we, are to, we were told are integers. So obviously the middle number is an integer. The statement number three is true. Let's see what can we knock out right now. Anything that, anything that does not have three in it. Anything that does not have three in it. Or that rules out A because it has one only. And that also knocks out C apparently. There you go, we're done. The answer is E. That's all. So had it been a real exam, that's, that's all the work I would have done myself. I wouldn't have wasted my time with uh, figuring out the middle one. Because that's it. And sometimes you get lucky. You can find the right answer just by trying two combinations. But that is only going to work, well I shouldn't say only, but you have to start in, you have to do it in a smart way. Don't start, most people start with step number one. What do they do next? They go to step number two. What do they do next? They go to step number three. They find the right combination and then they look at the answer choices. Don't behave like a puppet. Don't behave like a robot. Don't behave, don't behave in a mechanical way, in a predictable way. To speak the one that you find the easiest statement, there are three statements and they are of different difficulty level, generally speaking. It doesn't apply here because they were all quite simple. But generally speaking, when, when it's a one to three problem, this is what I call one to three problem. Three statements that they give you, Roman numeral one, two and three, one to three problems. When they give you one, three, one to three problem, generally speaking, those three statements are of different difficulty level. So therefore, having said that part, if they are of the different difficulty level, then by definition, one statement has to be the most difficult and one statement has to be the easiest. You start with the statement that you find easiest. Do you understand? One person might find statement number two easiest, the second person might find statement number three easiest, and one person might find the statement number one easiest. The same exact problem. Whatever you find easiest, start with that one first. Don't waste your time trying to figure out the others. Then move on to the next easier one and then save the hardest one for the end. If you have the time, if you don't have the time, if you're down to 50-50, just pick one and move on with your life. I'm done. I'm done with this problem. I'm going to quickly explain to you just for the learning purposes that this in fact is even. Because even times odd, think of this as 2 times 3. 2 times 3 is 6. So even times odd is even and even times even is going to be even. This is true. It is even. This equals even. And similarly, odd times even, 2 times 3, which is same as even times odd, odd times even is going to be even. And, and once you end up with even, then even times odd is going to be even again. That is also true, which is why, which is why the answer choice was E. Answer choice E says 1, 2, and 3. Let me take a look at the camera just for a second. And that's all there is. That's, that's all there was. I hope you found this helpful. If you wish to get hold of me for personal private tutoring, I'm located in the state of Connecticut. Or if you wish to get the hold of my DVDs or the solution manuals to these problems, either, either in the 11th edition or either in the 12th edition or the older edition, the 11th edition, if you wish to get hold of the solution manuals. Uh, if you wish to communicate with me for any reason at all, please go to the website. Go to my website at www.prep, P-R-E-P, prep for 4 gmail.com prep for gmail.com and send me an email all right thank you